Beloved, welcome back to the shop. In the last video I put up, I got roasted by you guys in the comments for going into the back country, not being prepared, not having water, not having radios. It wasn't as bad as it seems. I've got everything laid out. Let's go over all of the things that I take into the back country where you have to go into places where no one's gonna come and get you. You have to get yourself out uh, and well, Let's just get into it. Of course, living at the base of Mount Fuji, we ride right from home, or if we do trailer, it's only 10 minutes or so. But I carry all my equipment on my snow bike, either on the back tunnel here or on my backpack itself. The majority of the gear goes on the tunnel bag right here. This is a Moscow Moto uh, Stinger 22 that I just modified to fit on this lightweight rail. I carry a one gallon fuel bladder. Everything is just sitting here. I have it, of course, all strapped down. And then my tools go up inside here, trying to keep as much weight low and off my person as possible. This is the personal gear that I wear, boots, one piece, helmet, balaclava, that sort of thing. And then this is a lot of the emergency stuff. This is my Avi pack. This will have all my avalanche stuff on it, satellite communication, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, survival kit, multiple gloves, medical, extra down layer, battery, saw, that sort of thing. So let's put everything together and we'll go over every item by detail. This is the perfect time to share all this stuff because I unloaded yesterday, dried everything off, and I'm just putting it, all, putting it all back together. This is my tool kit. This is a Moscow Moto. It's actually a little bag designed to go on the side of their panniers. This is a local company uh, for MSR fuel bottles or SIGs, uh, but I repurpose it in the winter time for my personal, for the tools for my snow bike. So this is very similar to my summer kit uh, with the addition of some specialty tools that I need for the sled. The sled's designed in Canada by Yeti and there's very few tools that you need to work on it. It's very, very well engineered. So there's, there's not a whole lot here. This is a, a Spectra emergency tow rope. It's one of three that I carry. This is a special socket that comes with the sled uh, for the bolts. This is an extra shifter. I always carry an ex extra shifter and bolt and some epoxy for filling, uh, uh, for repairing any sort of like a damaged radiator, aluminum epoxy or steel epoxy this is. Um, instead of a heavy ratchet, I carry this. And my tools are mainly, everything here is gonna be from my dirt bike, dirt bike kit. We're gonna have zip ties, I carry a sawzall blade, a reciprocating blade for metal. You know, if you have to, you can you can cut through metal with that. All the sockets that I need. I try to keep it as small and compact as possible. This is years and years of evolution that have brought this toolkit <laughs> to existence. But really the backbone, apart from the sockets and the wrenches, are the Knipex, the adjustable wrench and the small Cobra pliers. They fit nicely. Titanium wrenches and 6, 8, 10, 12, are they? 7, 13? I don't know, the ones that I need. A razor blade, some wire. Uh, here's the extra bolt and washer for the extra shifter. Uh, that's basically it. That that's, makes up the tool kit. This is my auxiliary fuel bag. This is one gallon. This is made by our friends over in Bend, Oregon, Giant Loop, another great company. Can't say enough about this bag. This, is, this has gotten me home more than once. I have an extended range tank on the bike and this is just a little bit extra. Super compact. This is the kit that I put in my air box for the, I don't have an air box on my snow bike uh, in, for, in the summertime. That way I can keep all that metal off my back. This little Moscow Moto case fits right in here just perfectly. Now I, I put these little aluminum tabs on here and these, this way I can secure with a volley strap. I can go through the bags, through these tabs. I just utilized a couple existing bolts on here. And now, this is secure by that strap. That keeps the center of gravity right on the pivot, not out on the swing arm, and that's ideal. Now for here, we've got some ropes here, and we just modified some straps for from a snowboard. And this one gallon fuel is, it's, I prefer it over a, a plastic can because it's, it's soft and it really fits in here nice and tucks in out of the way. And I've got the other end of the snowboard binding on the rack, which we'll fill up next here, which latches in here. Snowboard bindings have been designed to work in with lots of snow and ice, and it's, uh, it's really a nice deal right here, and it holds this in securely. And I've got my extra fuel and my tools off my back. 
How I set up the tunnel bag was I'm using the Yeti frame. This is made uh, to go onto the back of the tunnel. So you can mount hard boxes, whatever you want, any sort of a bag you want. I had this on hand, so this is what I've used, and this is my third season, and it's worked out really good. So I just took the rack apart, and it, the, the Moscow Moto dry bag had these plastic deals on there. They fit over the rods. I threaded it through. That holds the back. And then the local dealership that I buy motorcycles from, they give you these free keychains, And I just adap adapted those uh, to hold on the front. And there we have our waterproof tunnel bag right there. So what I put in this, this is my main emergency kit. So this is just a catch-all for all the little things. I don't like to have things loose in the bag. I, I keep these hot hands if it's really cold, like it gets down you know, 10, 20 below zero. These are my heavy winter gloves and they actually have a compartment, a zipper pouch on the back of the hand is where they get, your hands tend to get cold. I can take these little hotties here and I can put them in there and that, that's really a, a good solution. So I, I, rarely, I don't know that I've ever used these. I've never had to because I've got heated bars, but in an extreme situation, that's what I, how I do it. So I have three pair of gloves, a heavyweight, a medium weight, and then two pair of lightweight, which I norm, this is all I usually carry. It's all, all I, I, I have, a, I wear, <laughs> wear a pair while I'm riding and the extra pair. So four pair of gloves total go in the tunnel bag. In the emergency kit, I've got a SAM splint. This is an aluminum splint for dealing with broken bones. I've got some emergency food. I've got a roll of uh, duct tape, actually two. I've got a heavy duty uh, webbing with a locking carabiner, also retrieval toast, toast strap. I've got a, uh, an air horn. If radios go down, I can sound this on the hour. That's how we, our, our deal is with the guys and they can hear and, and come towards the area. We have multiple ways, I'll show you, of finding each other. Uh, a traditional compass, in case everything fails and I need to walk out. Two lighters, batteries, two packs, eight batteries, zip ties, a loud whistle, and some extra hearing protection. But that really makes up, it's not the medical kit, but it makes up, you know, just kind of the, it's the junk drawer, you know, of the whole deal. Next up, we'll have a thermal layer, a down layer in a plastic sack. Even though this is a watertight bag, you're in and out of it for lunch. Snow gets in there and down gets wet. And when down gets wet, it has no insulating value. So keep that in a plastic bag. A pair of sunglasses. When you get out for lunch, you'll get snow blind. It's so bright up there, especially on a bluebird day. So it's not very nice to wear your goggles while you're having lunch. So I have that. This is uh, emergency phone cables and battery backup. Battery backup for my phone. And then a universal cable set that gives me any combination to charge or make it anything working. Android, Apple, doesn't make any difference. And then charging cables are in here as well. So this is just a grab and go to deal with the phone. I carry a silky big boy. I've had my uh, sled stuck in trees before where I, <laughs> you, you crash into something and you got to cut yourself out. And I, I like to have a big saw. I used to carry the pocket boy, but I found it's not big enough. And so just make sure you keep these when you put them away. It's so cold. The aerosol doesn't work. When you put them away, put a little bit of oil on them, make sure that they're functioning properly. Finally, I carry an extra drive belt, a headlamp. I don't have a headlamp strap on here because I've got the tech lock, I have this click right onto my helmet because I don't like fooling with those straps. And then this is basic, a basic trauma kit, broke down and put into this little pack. So a tourniquet, a pair of small trauma shears, uh, combat gauze, an Israeli bandage and a blood stopper. This is not meds and such, but just a full on trauma kit. The other stuff is I keep in my pack. And I've still got a fair amount of room, enough room for lunch or an extra layer. Now a waterproof bag, how it works is you one, two, three rolls, and then back. You gotta think about whatever you choose, everything gets so iced up and covered with snow that little fiddly latches and things become difficult. So you wanna make, make sure things are simple, but this is a very good 
tunnel bag, very small and not overly heavy. Just what I need, nothing more. There's a zipper compartment in the top and I keep in that things that I get to all the time. This is a sewn strap. Everybody I ride with, I encourage them to have one of these. This is very handy. You can wrap it around forks and you can use it to pull stuff out. Very, very handy. A lot of guys keep these right on their person because you use them all the time when you're helping your buddies. So I keep that in the top as well as a couple of extra volet straps for doing repairs or securing equipment. The volet strap is the, if you don't use them or haven't experienced them, they're one of the greatest inventions known to man. All of this equipment on the tunnel is very light. I mean, I'd, I'd say, you know, it doesn't go much over 15 pounds with the fuel. This rack is a quick attach. It locks in here and it's got these aviation style pins that secure it. And that way you can grab it and take it with you. It's a great design. Here's the snowboard binding mod I was telling you about. On the rack, we've got this rope, and then the, I guess this would be the male end. I go through, we've put, I've woven rope on the bag too, so we can go underneath all of this, and now this fuel is secured by a ratcheting snowboard strap right there. So very low center of gravity, out of the way, nothing that I'm gonna hurt myself on like a hard bag, soft, light, absolute minimalistic, but it all fits in here very nice. What scares me the most about this sport is getting lost. <laughs> so uh, Navigation is uh, a big deal. So we run these Trail Tech Voyager Pros. This is a Was local Washington company as well that makes uh, a brilliant computer with buddy tracking. So this one here, I'm getting ready to put it back on Jack's bike. Uh, and I just finished installing mine. I broke all of them last year. I've, I've actually, I've broken three of these. These trail techs have been a little frustrating to me because they're about $700 a piece. And what happens is I, I had them mounted up here. Oftentimes you hit stuff, go over the bars and I crack uh, the housings, the bottom housings. Every one of these has got a cracked right there. See, that's all cracked, cracked bottom housing and the water gets in and then they quit working. So the solution has been to move them down here, build a custom dashboard out of carbon fiber here, and then mount them in a billet protector. Now, I've, all of this has been protected. It's all got billet around it. I'm not gonna break these anymore and I can still do all, use all the functions. So this is not only engine management, temperature, what the bike's doing, but also my navigation and buddy tracking. So this is a very, it's just something you have to have when you're in the Outback. But you better believe I have backups. I've told you guys I have the worst sense of direction in the whole, whole world. Uh, so in addition to that, this is a quad lock for iPhone. I can run this horizontal or vertical, but iPhones are just not reliable in, in an austere environment. Um, on a nice sunny days, if you can use them, you can, it's fine. But when it gets bad and stormy, take it off, put it in your pocket. They just, they just don't hold up. But I also am running GPS on my phone, GPS on my inReach, as well as my watch. So I've got four GPSs going just in case, plus map and compass. I forgot to mention, I've also got a little bit of storage up on the number plate bag. I just pop riveted this on here. And this is very handy for an extra set of gloves or sunglasses, things that you're getting at all the time, phone cables and that sort of thing. Now, this is an SXF model, so it's the Supercross. It, it's, you need the, the 450 SXF because you need the power. It's got the most powerful engine, latest, greatest stuff. So you have to put an auxiliary light on. So this is a rigid, small rigid LED uh, for, uh, for riding, coming back in at night. The switch for the light is a little waterproof switch right here on the carbon dashboard. Just off and on. Another cool feature is the heated handlebars. There are cooling lines right here and here, plumbed in and tapped into the bars that circulate hot water through the cooling system. So your hands are always warm. You can ride at zero degrees with just normal motocross gloves. It's rare you have to have big heavy gloves. This sport is so new and so fringe, a lot of the stuff has to be homemade. You can't buy it, you know, you can't really buy it off the shelf. So how I control the heat of the bike, I I've got to keep the bike between 150 and 200 degrees, or I like to anyway. So right here. So this light is yellow, this light is red. It will come on. I have this set at 150, this set at 212. So when this is yellow, I look down, I can see that I'm, in op I'm warm enough and I'm not too hot because I'm not red. If this turns red, I grab these and pull them up. These are just homemade, uh, little heat resistant 
pieces that slide down between the radiator guards and block off the radiators. And I adjust the temperature of the bike throughout the day by either taking one out or raising them up a little bit. Because as I'm climbing, the bike will start getting heat in it. I'll, I'll pull these up, cool it down a little bit, but I'm constantly adjusting it according to how I, I can feel the heat in the hand grips. And that tells me how the bike is running. Now for the gear that I keep on my person, this is very deliberate. There is kind of a method. As a rule of thumb, you want to have equipment on your person that you can survive with. Let's say that you separate from your bike, your sled, your motorcycle. This is a general principle that you should always adhere to. In the event of you're separated for something like that, that you can't go and get the things that you need that are life-saving, you want to have them on your person. So almost a duplicate, fire starter, basic stuff, not your primary, but what you would need, medical supplies, and primarily, especially, communication or self-rescue type of equipment. This is a special pack. It's an avalanche pack or an avi pack, as we call them out west, and it is very specific uh, in that it has a, an air compressor that's run off of a high power capacitor. Now what that does is that inflates a giant balloon. If you look at this handle right here, if you pull this handle, right, and it's meant to pull a cross body like this with the left hand, and that's on purpose as well. If you need to outrun an avalanche, you want to be able to have that throttle handle so that you can keep trying to get away from it in the left hand you can reach around and if need be you can deploy that airbag. Now when you pull that lever, that inflates a giant airbag that comes out of the back immediately and what that does is that floats you to the top in an avalanche. An avalanche is very similar, the snow almost turns into a liquid and you can get trapped underneath of it and that's what kills folks. If you can have these balloons, they've been shown in tests to really I guess give you a much better chance of survival by keeping you on top of the avalanche. And so the whole pack is essentially built around that. On the left riser will be the remote mic for the radio. The radios are kept in the back, kept warm so the batteries don't die and everything is waterproof and controllable. Now I can listen to and I can talk to and I can key my mic right here on the riser so I can turn and put my face right to it. And I can also hear it even over the engine if it's idling. So that's pretty important those two things the way that they lay out now you've got on any avi pack or any good one you're going to have two red pull tabs and that's going to expose the secret chamber and the secret chamber or the chamber that is to be left alone will have three things in it and that's going to be your avalanche recovery system right here you're going to have collapsible probes for locating you're going to have a high quality shovel that will extend into a you know bigger shovel this will also be used for digging your sled out if you get into trouble and then the third thing is going to be the avalanche beacon itself which is going to be worn on the body and these are actually quite amazing pieces of technology now everyone has these or they whoops, they should and this is what it looks like let me show you how it works an avalanche beacon is in a harness that is worn across the body and secure it around the waist, always with a lanyard so that you tied to you so you can't lose it. This is very important. Now this is a transmitter and a receiver. And it's got two modes in it. So if you unlock it here, if I put this to send, now this is transmitting. If I were to get buried in the snow or in the sand, anyone with a transceiver, when they get close enough, will have an arrow where it will direct them right to me. Now, if I'm searching, let's say a person that we're with goes down or disappears in an avalanche, then I would switch this over to search mode. Now, this is going to be receiving the signal and not transmitting. So this is an important distinction right here. So this is an important piece of kit. They come in all different brands. It, the brand doesn't matter. They're all on the same channel, and they're all designed to work together. But a very high-quality piece of kit that should be worn on your body. Avipacks have four compartments. The main compartment is going to house, this is, the, this is the big balloon, this is the bag folds up. It's made out of a special zipper that is designed to, as the pressure of the bag starts to inflate, it pulls the zipper apart. I don't know how it works, it just, it just does. Next you have your compressor or your biggest compartment. It's going to have a capacitor driven comp compressor. Now this is fabulous design because back in the day, the older ones we used to have, if you wanted to travel, 
you couldn't travel with the compressed air and you had to go to a scuba shop to have that refilled. This technology is cooler because this is a high volume Swiss, I believe, air compressor that runs off of a capacitor. So a capacitor, as you know, can be charged and just can hold power indefinitely. When you need it, it's there for you. So that can be recharged at home with USB, or if you get into a pinch, you can put two AA batteries in here, and that over a few minutes will recharge that, that capacitor. So what's nice is that you can deploy this over and over again and repack it in the field and always have it. You never have to go home because you depleted your air supply. There's a pocket right here for the radio where it's kept right here in the small of your back. It's kept warm. The remote mic is out on the riser, so that's kept there. And the only other thing I keep right here is my water bottle to keep it from freezing as close to my body as possible. So that's the only things that I put in that main compartment. Now this is the goggle. The other thing that's really important that you have to really focus on is, is having multiple goggles or really good goggles because they're always fogging up and you're all, you always have to deal with it. And if you can't see, then you, it's really dangerous. When you have flat light, when you're running, when you're riding mountain riding where you have the ability to fall into crevasses, uh, it's just, it's perilous. It's absolutely perilous. It, it's a very interesting sport. It's 50% absolute sheer terror and 50% best thing you've ever done. Uh, and it's uh, sometimes more terror than the fun side, but having being able to see is important. So this is the solution that I've come up with. Good goggles, goggle maintenance is critical, uh, if you ask me. So some guys carry multiple goggles, but the check technology has kind of changed into these cool ones now where they have replaceable lenses that are magnetic. Very, very easy to, to swap out. You can swap them out, they just stick on. So rather than carrying multiple frames, which are bulky, I carry multiple lenses in single frames. So I've got different colors depending on different conditions. Uh, overcast, um, high sunny, or if you're coming in at night or it's really dark, uh, you want to have clear. Actually, this is the clear here. This is the sunny. You know, it depends. You know, different preferences. But these all snap onto the frames, and you, if you wreck a pair or they get all just fogged up or just too wet, then you can, you've got that solution right here. I usually wear contacts when I'm in, but if I ever have a contact problem, I have prescription lenses that are designed to fit in these frames. So if I need be, I can yank the contacts out, or I just don't want to wear contacts for whatever reason. You know, they're, they're problematic, but these fit in here, like in here, and now you've got a full set of, of your prescription and then you could wear your lenses and they won't fog. All these, this system is worked, is designed to not fog up, but it's really, really high quality. These are made by Zeal and then a micro cloth. Avi packs or any backcountry pack is gonna have a special hardened case or a case for goggles, usually up on the top. Because I, I can't overemphasize the importance of maintaining goggles and, and having good goggles. I also put that extra microfiber in there and a few extra contacts in that pouch but no frames just the replacement lenses the goggles i'll have on me now if it gets really nasty really really gnarly i'll use my heated goggles heated goggles are not my favorite they are very effective but they're it's just another thing An another battery another fiddly deal to to fool with but how they essentially work is, is you have a a big lithium battery pack here that you plug in that mounts on the on the side strap. This is rechargeable and it's got some confusing interface there and I always forget but there's a high low but it, what it does is just like a car windshield it has an element around here that actually heats up and this if, if you're having trouble with goggles this is the solution Th these will work in any environment so I'll keep those charged up and if I have the room I'll throw those in the tunnel bag or in my backpack. And finally, the back pouch, which I'll keep a roll of toilet paper. This is, um, I can communicate a satellite. This is the in-reach anywhere, as well as my iPhone. I've got a 15, so that also is sat a satellite sat phone. So I actually have two ways of communicating without cellular. Uh, three, <laughs> this is an ACR. This is a military grade or marine grade subscription uh, satellite communicator that will uh, get you noti notified anywhere in the world. A pencil and write in the rain pad. A bivy, a heavy duty adventure medical bivy that you can get in, uh, kind of like a Mylar sleeping bag. Uh, two quick survive fire starters. 
and a full EDC kit, basic first aid kit, and uh, some meds in there, uh, a basic fire starter, uh, razor blade, just you know, like the guy, you you could do pretty well with just this kit. You, at least you could get a fire go, going in, and some emergency food rations. And then a ride in the rain if you need to leave a note for someone. And I think that is it for this compartment. And this is it. This is all the peripheral gear that I have to grab. Really, only two or three pieces. Everything is kept on the bike. I go through it. It's all been, you know, I know what I need. I, I take it off. I put it back on so I never have to, to rethink about it or rethink it. My pack is packed, ready to go, everything charged, radios, AVI gear. So I, I grab that. I grab my helmet bag, which has got my balaclava. Uh, it's got my goggles in it. And I grab my boots. And I grab my one piece. I'm usually wearing my one piece. So actually what I'm grabbing is my pack and my helmet. I'm usually wearing my boots as well. Two things and stop by the store, fill up your water, grab some snacks, whatever you want. Uh, but the one piece is, this one piece is so warm that all I need, for most times, all I need is a base layer underneath of it. Just icebreaker, smart wool, maybe a fleece vest. Uh, if it's really cold, I'll put the down jacket on, uh, but rarely, rarely do you need down. You're working so hard on the bike that you don't typically need it. Ah, that's it. That's it. All right. So uh, I did this video. There were a couple of you that asked if I could go into detail over this stuff. And it was the perfect opportunity because I was just had it all out and was all going back in. Uh, so I kind of share with you how I rig up uh, for going into the back country on our snow bikes. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't take a moment. Click the thumbs up. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers and we'll see you all on the next video.